Shane Osborne, my guest, state treasurer, 2006, uh, Shane leaves the Army, and you... Navy. Uh, Shane leaves the Navy. Thank Sorry, you. can't let that one go. No. <laughs> 2006, a year after leaving the Navy, you run for and decisively win your first political race, the Office of State Treasurer. Mm-hmm. Now, you defeated, you defeated the, uh, the person that um, Governor Mike Johans had appointed to mm-hmm. that position, Ron Ross. Mm-hmm. Then in the general, you, uh, you defeat the Nebraska Party candidate, and this was a pretty decisive victory there, 76% to 23%. Sure. The, both of them were very decisive. It was almost two to one in the, in the Republican primary, um, and I, I have no uh, misgivings about uh, how I was able to do that uh, and win. It was one. Um, people knew me. Uh, I'd been all over the state, you know, so it was a, it was a name recognition thing. I'm aware of that. But my job in that campaign was to go out and tell people what I intended to do and what I would do uh, if they elected me. So they knew who I was as a Navy guy, but why, how does that transfer over into uh, elected office? And so I told them uh, exactly what I intended to do, what I saw as problems with the office, uh, and I, quite frankly, we 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 fixed it. Uh, we there were there were several issues, um, and one of the things I promised the people I would do is bring transparency to government. I think that is absolutely one of the most important things you can do as a government official. Is as we take people's tax dollars, take their money out of their pockets, the government does. Uh, the least we can do is give you a receipt. And and people aren't never are never going to trust government until they know where their dollars are being spent, and it's completely out in the open. And so, we launched a website, NebraskaSpending.gov, that. Um, is is the most robust in the country. I've, I've just put the checkbook uh, online a few weeks ago, 1.7 million transactions, but we have all the agencies' budgets, all the contracts and vendors who's doing business with the state of Nebraska, and we also put historical data. 93-county interactive map. You can look and see your property tax levy rates, your state aid to schools. All that information needs to be readily uh, accessible to people, and I think that if the federal government did that, we'd, we'd be a lot better off right now. Making the move from military service to politics seems to be a natural progression for many people. Help me understand why that is. Well, I think there's uh, the military teaches you discipline, teaches you focus, um, teaches you to focus on what you need to have done, and sometimes you're taking fire in the military in a different way than you do in politics. Uh, but it also teaches you what you're made of. So you don't, you don't have a lot of the self-doubt where some, some folks don't get that kind of a challenge in the civilian world. So I think that that helped. I think the fact that you work with people of all different backgrounds, to say the least. Uh, the uh, My squadron, they used to call us the land of misfit toys. I mean, you had uh, 20-year-olds that spoke seven languages and, you know, uh, should be going to Harvard, but they decided to serve. And you had a couple people that uh, maybe worked on your airplane that got a choice from a judge. You can go to jail or you can join the Navy. So you get a pretty diverse background in the military, and it's all good people, and, and you, you work with them. And so I think that that helps a lot. You learn to work with people in very stressful situations. And so it, it does transfer over for some people. And I, I was kind of surprised at, at how I was able to go in and get the buy-in uh, as quickly as I was with the existing staff in the treasurer's office and, and get, get on the same page. But uh, the management and the leadership – you get at such a young age in the military, it's, it's tough to duplicate. You know, by the time I was 26, I had that responsibility. I was a senior guy in charge of a $180 million airplane, 24 crew members, but I also had a maintenance division that I was a quality assurance officer for with uh, 335 people in it. So, you know, there's some pretty big opportunities to, to, uh, to, to lead and, and develop your management and leadership skills. Did you have your eye on state treasurer, or was it an opportunity? I looked at it as a way with my mathematics background, and I and I got back quite frankly and started paying taxes here in Nebraska, and went, "Whoa, what is going on?" You know, I'd been gone all my adult life. I'd been all over, uh, living all over the world, and uh, since college, and I just thought, you know, uh, we're a good state. We're we're common sense. We don't get ourselves into debt and trouble, and that's really paying off right now. But we're we're fairly high taxed state. And so I thought this is a good way. And and really, I ran on the platform of bringing transparency. 